show you factoring. This is where you start with factoring. Um, when you when you do factoring out the GCF, GCF is greatest common factor. So what is it that every single term has in common? That is your greatest. Take the greatest. So I'm going to start with the number. So here's my first example. I like to have my um, my polynomials or whatever in standard form if I can. Um, if not, not a big deal either. Uh, I guess it depends also, you know, on your professor and what they would prefer. But standard form is always, you know, the nice cleanest form. Um, now, I start with the numbers. So looking at just the coefficients. So 2, 4, 8, or negative 8, but we'll ignore the negative for a second, and 4. What is the number that they all have in common? Or the biggest number that they all have in common? Now, I mean, you might think 4, but that... Um, only these three have in common. This one does not have um, a four in common. The largest number that goes into two, four, eight, and four is two. That is the biggest number that can go into every single coefficient that I have here. Now, looking at the variables, I have an x to the seventh, so I have seven of them here. x to the sixth, six of them here. x to the fifth, five of them here, and an x squared, two of them here. So what do they all have in common? So the way that you do this, obviously they all have an x in common. What exponent goes? How many can I take out of each of these cases? Well, you're going to take the smallest exponent because that's the most that they all have in common. This one has seven, but this one only has two. This one has five. This one only has two. What is the biggest amount of x's that every single one of these have in common? The biggest amount is two of them. So you're always taking out the smallest exponent when you're doing a GCF. Now there's no other variable or number or whatever that we can uh, deal with for this example. So that is our GCF. This is the GCF, greatest common factor amongst each one of these. Now I took it out, what's left? Now there are a couple ways that you could do this. Um, you know, if you think about it, you know, you. If you wanted to go backwards, you would try to figure out what times this, what would go here? What times 2x squared would give me 2x to the 7th? Well, I took out the 2. I don't need any more numbers. I took out 2x's. I had 7 to start with, so I have 5 remaining. Now, how do I check it? If I were to distribute this and multiply these two out, would it give me what I started with? 2x squared times x to the fifth is 2x to the seventh, so that works. Plus, 2 times what is 4? 2 times 2. I took 2x's out. I had 6 to start with, so I have 4 remaining. 2x squared times 2x to the fourth would be 4x to the sixth. Bringing down my minus. 2 times what gives me 8? 2 times 4. I had 5x's to start with. I took two of them out, so I have three remaining. Plus, two times what gives me four? Two times two. I had two x's to start with. I took two of them out. There's none left, so then, boom, I'm done. If I were to distribute this back through, it would give me the same exact polynomial that I started with, and therefore this is factored correctly. There's nothing else here in common amongst all of these four terms. Nothing in common amongst all four terms. So I took the greatest common factor out. Okay, so that's my first example. So I'll do a couple of these. Here's my next one, number two. So now I have numbers and I have x's and I have y's. So this is a y squared if you can't tell. Well, let's look at the numbers first. I have a 25, a 15, and a 30. What number, what is the largest number that goes into 25, 15, and 30? Well. Five, right? Um, I can't really go higher than that. 15 doesn't go into 25, that doesn't work. So five is the biggest number that goes into all three of these. Now, how many X's should I take out? All three terms include X's. So I can take out an X, because it's included. It's in common amongst all three terms. Now this one has two X's, right? X and an X. This one has one, and this one has three of them. So I can only take one of them out, right? I always take the smallest exponent. How many y should I take out? They all have a y. This one has 4, y to the 4th, y to the 3rd, and y squared. 
I can only take out two. That is in common. Now what's left? So this is my GCF here, GCF in the front. And I can always verify that after I do this too. I'll show you what I mean. So let's figure out what's left. So five times what is 25? Well, five times five. I took one of these X's out. I had two to, to start with, so I have one remaining. I had two Y squared taken out and I had four to begin with, so I have Y squared left, right? If I multiply this times this, it will give me what I started with and therefore that's factored correctly. Next term, five times what gives me 15? Five times three. Now, I only had X to the first, one of these X's here, and I took it out, so I have none left. I had three Y's, Y to the third, and I took two of them out, so I have one left. If I were to multiply this times this term, I would end up with 15X times uh, Y to the third, right? Five times negative three is negative 15. X times, well, you know, X, Y squared times one, Y to the third. Plus, what times five gives me 30? Five times six. How many X's go here? I had three, took one out, have two left. How many Y's? I had two, took two out, have none remaining. Close up, let's double check. If I were to distribute this back through, Right? Would it give me the same thing I started with? If yes, then I factored correctly. Is there anything else in common amongst all three terms? There's no other number in common between a 5, 3, and 6. They don't all have x terms. They don't all have y terms. So I did take out the greatest common factor because there's nothing left in common here. If there was, I would take out another one. I want to take out the greatest common factor. Now, sometimes the greatest common factor is a binomial, like in these cases. Imagine that this is one term and this is one term. What do they have in common? Both of these terms have an x plus 3 in common. They actually have a binomial in common. So that is my GCF here. x plus 3 is the GCF. This is what is in common between this whole thing and this whole thing. What happens when I take out that x plus 3? I'm factoring out, factoring out a binomial. Factoring out a binomial, whereas here I factored out a monomial, a single term. Now I'm factoring out a binomial. What's left when I take out the x plus 3? Well, I took this out, so I'm left with just x. Bring down my plus sign. I took x plus 3 out here. What's left? Just the 2. If I were to take x plus 3 and distribute it back through, x plus 3 times x is x times x plus 3, and x plus 3 times 2 is 2 times x plus 3. This is my factored case. Now the reason I'm showing you this type of factoring is because this is where factoring by grouping goes. To factor by grouping, you need to know how to factor out a binomial because that's the goal. You have a common binomial. So here we go again. Here's another example. Here's a first term and here's a second term. And what do those two big terms have in common? They both have an x plus y in common. So they have a binomial in common. So my GCF here is the binomial x plus y. They have a binomial in common. And when I take out that binomial, what's left? Well, I'm left with an x squared for my first term, plus I took out the binomial x plus y, so I'm left with just a 3, and there I'm factored. If I were to distribute the x plus y back through, it would give me the same thing that I started with. This is where factor by grouping goes. You want to be able to factor out a binomial in order to factor by grouping, which is what my next video will cover. So this is just factoring out a GCF, which could be a monomial or a binomial.